y'all and welcome to episode 30 of my making podcast. My name is Marlene and I'm in my multi-craftual era. I don't have a concise intro for these videos that I repeat every time, but uh, if you're new here, thanks for clicking on this video. And if you've been here for a while, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, if you want to support this channel, you can do so by, first of all, clicking the subscribe button. Uh, a bunch of you guys watching these videos um, out of the time aren't uh, subscribed to the channel, so feel free to do so. It uh, really helps out uh, my channel and the work I do here. Uh, second of all, you can support the channel by gifting uh, me a pattern from my uh, wish list on Ravelry. And you can um, you can use Ko-Fi to support me for just the cup for just the cost of a cup of coffee. Um, thirdly, you could do so by shopping through my affiliate link with Sorella. The spring collection in stock order collection kind of is uh, dropping today as of Friday the eighth of March, uh, which is today. Um, and uh, I don't have uh, the products and yarn with me yet, so I will show you uh, what they look like and what I'll make with them in my next video. But if you're already planning on getting anything from them, uh, you would support me um, additionally to supporting Sorella by going through my link and I'll get a small commission from those sales. So yeah, all links are linked in the description box as always. Let's get into what I'm wearing. I have finally finished my Traveler crew neck by Andrea Mari and I'm wearing it today. Um, it, this took me exactly four months four months to make. Uh, it wasn't ever my most prioritized whip <laughs> ever. That's why it uh, took me a bit longer. Usually uh, I would take about one to two months for a sweater project. But as you know, I tend to have a couple of things going on at the same time. And so this, um, yeah, was something that I had put to the side a couple of times. This was also a pretty new construction to me. So this was knit bottom up and it was also um, in a new yarn for me. This was knit up in Pearl Soho, good wool. I've just checked my gauge. I did not gauge swatch for this beforehand. Um, which is a bit bad, I know. And I am off by about one and a half stitches, stitch-wise, and by two stitches row-wise, which means this is a bit smaller than I had intended it to be. I knit size four, which should give me a couple of uh, centimeters um, positive ease. Let me actually check how many. Uh, but then in the end, I didn't get, um, obviously I didn't get as many centimeters as I had hoped I would. Let me check in the um, pattern real quick. So yeah, this was intended to have 127 centimeters of uh, bust circumference. Um, I did actually, oh, let me see. All right, so interestingly, I did not write down the measurements of the body. I really like the, uh, the amount of ease that I'm getting and I could, I would probably say that it is around 20 to 25 centimeters. So I probably should have gone up maybe by uh, half a needle size or even a quarter needle size that would have worked out. Um, but never mind. I really enjoy the way that this has turned out. I'm sorry that I didn't have the exact numbers of um, my circumference uh, now. Um, I do think uh, through blocking, I thought that these uh, sleeves would grow a bit more. They're now more so like bracelet length. I am able to tuck it down and maybe, um, yeah, have them longer if I'm holding onto them, but then they ride up while I'm like talking with my hands or working at home. But that is actually not too bad since this is uh, a really, uh, light weight sweater. I can see this being something that I wear throughout all of spring. I'm actually wearing it with some linen pants at the moment and it's not as warm yet as I, I thought like as I would love it to be. Uh, but yeah, I could see this being very functional piece. It's also quite cropped. It did grow quite a bit. Uh, I've actually got the numbers for this 
written down, it grew by eight centimeters uh, in length while or after blocking. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the downsides of this make, and I'll get to the pattern uh, right then afterwards. So overall, I love this. I'm really happy with it. I think the color suits me really well. It's a really perfect neutral, I guess. Um, but the yarn I had really worked, uh, really liked working with. Uh, I liked the look of it, the touch of it. But then I had worn it for one day when I was working. And obviously I, when I tend to get up in the mornings and like um, uh, I'm off to work, I have a, a coat on. And then I, I usually wear a, a backpack with like my uh, lunch in it and uh, my water, water bottle and uh, my whip. Um, for my like half an hour lunch break <laughs> but so I have something around here so there is quite a bit of friction uh happening here but the pilling of this garment let me tell you that was a whole, pretty horrendous I never have a garment pill this much on the first wear so yeah I have completely depilled it so I'm going to put up some pictures and I really hope that this is not going to be something that occurs like all of the time but that that this is more of like a situation where it pills quite a bit in the beginning and then it calms down um which i've seen happening before in other projects but yeah this was pretty bad um i i was really shocked actually by how much it pilled it was easy to depill it so that is good um but yeah i've had sweaters for so like for so much longer and i've worn it so many more times and I've only had to like shave it a couple of times in between. And uh, for this to be, for me to have to shave it right after wearing it for like one time, that was pretty annoying. Um, but yeah, I liked the construction. It was really nice to try something new. Uh, I liked how um, there is um, that the, the seams that you kind of construct while knitting it. I really like that. Um, I think it has a great fit. It's like the boxy. It still has pretty um, narrow arms, actually. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm just getting over this cold that I had last week. I'm feeling so much better. Thank you so much for your uh, kind words. Um, so many well wishes. Uh, but yeah, I'm still coughing uh, a bit. So I, I really like it's uh, the narrow uh, sleeves and the boxy fit in the in the body. I I hope you're able to see. I'm gonna put in uh, some video and pictures if I um, remember. Um, but yeah, this is. Um, we'll see how the yarn wears. I'll report back on that because I think it is a huge disappointment for someone to wear something once and then. Uh, it, the yarn looking like this but then also if it doesn't happen every time after wearing I'd be okay with that so yeah I'll report back on that for sure um, I have finished the Lauder Vest Test Knit for the Crea Bea Rebecca Clo I actually have it on a hanger here because it's uh, been sitting on my um, wardrobe um, yeah clothing thing <laughs> uh it's been waiting for me to wear it i actually re-blocked it up after blocking it the first time uh, my gauge is okay but then also um i had just blocked out this part quite a bit and then not so much this um armhole um situation and this part so the um cables were looking a bit different i actually also just submitted my feedback to rebecca on the feedback form um, I'm really happy to have finished this. This is actually made in um, Jerome Natura Ulis, um, Ulis and Woolly Yarn Surrey that I got on a cone. That cone is now done. I had the smallest nugget left over and I put it into my leftover stash. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with this. A couple of things. I did um, knit the ribbings a bit more narrow than uh, the pattern suggested, especially the uh, v-neck ribbing and the other ones by about a centimeter. And I also shortened the body by about two centimeters, so I cropped it a, a tiny bit. Um, I did this because I had a problem with the construction. This was actually addressed and Rebecca is going to um, put that in the pattern. 
because I was short on row gauge. I actually have a completely different knitting uh, tension than Rebecca does. I often have to go up half to a full needle size from her recommendations. This is actually the second test that I've done for her. I had applied for one more, the Tulsa tea last year, but I didn't get that. So I did the stick season and now this. Um, <clears throat> and I also had applied to uh, test knit the sweater and the vest both in size three and four, but I got the vest v-neck in size three, obviously, um, which I was fine with. Uh, I'm not sure if I had, obviously I, I would have been able to, but not having to knit the sleeves in full um, cables was actually quite nice. Uh, and I think if I'm doing vests, I am more so a v-neck vest kind of person, I think, or maybe turtleneck something like the Amy slip over. Um, but yeah, things to say about this. Um, I was short on row gauge, which meant that while I was doing the dec the increases for the V-neck, uh, I was ending up, uh, so my V-neck got shorter because my row gauge was shorter. I hope I'm making sense. But like I said, this is going to be addressed in the pattern. So if you're having uh, a similar uh, problem that I uh, had, there will be solutions for that. I decided not to frog bag and change the uh, pacing of the increases because I couldn't be, um, no, I couldn't, I, I didn't see myself doing that. <laughs> I decided to go with the more um, shallow v-neck, although I prefer a deeper v on myself. I wouldn't wear this with nothing underneath anyways so i would just you know style this with like a t-shirt or a long sleeve underneath so it doesn't really matter to me that the v would have been deeper i actually would have preferred this to come maybe down to here it's only a couple of centimeters but that is a design element that um is not representative of the finished garment that you might receive if you finish knitting this to the pattern. I hope I'm making sense with this. The one thing that is to pattern, but that I'm not the hugest fan of, but is something that Rebecca um, is usually doing in her designs, is the actual arm depth, uh, armhole depth. Uh, I think for me, um, this would sit even better on my body if it had like two, like one or two centimeters deeper armhole depth. I had the same problem with the, um, what was it called again? The lace cardigan that I did from her library, which was the corn cardigan. I did that in a size that would give me very little positive ease with which the size three in this also did. Also did corn cardigan in size three. And the fit in and of itself was okay, but it felt like it was just sitting like right there in my armpit. This is also one of the reasons why I reblocked this. I have actually not tried it on since reblocking it. Hopefully that helped out a bit. And maybe it's just my personal body measurements that my that I prefer my armhole depth to be a bit deeper in a way. But yeah, just to keep in mind, I hope I'm not confusing anyone or making anyone believe that I do not love this pattern, which I completely do. And I'm interested to see in how I will style this. This is a bit out of my comfort zone and I think it could be so stylish, like I said, just with a white t-shirt uh, or maybe like a textured um, long sleeve or even a turtleneck, um, like a cotton shirt underneath. Uh, but yeah, also I don't, I've never really styled vests before. So this is going to be my, my trial project with that. I'm going to show you the pattern texture which I really love <clears throat> and then the v-neck again with these central double decreases which is really neat I did a an Italian sewn bind off on all of the edges and I think that's it if you've got any more questions please feel free to uh, ask them down below in the whoops uh, in the comment section and I'll get to them. Other than that, I always have my Ravelry pages linked and I try to put uh, in as many information or as much information as I 
kind of think is necessary or that I can come up with in a way. So I hope that helps. My next finished object are these summer camp socks. Um, they're by Joel Selinski. And I've just tried them on for the first time to take a picture of them. There's actually some sewing thread in them. They're in the Coast to Coast Yarn Co. Potato and Leek colorway, which I think is a perfect fit for them. Um, something that they've taught me is that I would really love to try out maybe a stitch count of 60 stitches the next time around that I make some socks. Some of my socks tend to, on a 2.5 millimeter needle, Magic Loop is my preferred knitting method for socks, tend to be a bit big, just a bit, there's just a bit too much room throughout the sock. And so I'll just try and erase those four stitches for my next sock. Within my, uh, just currently working on a sock project, I, I didn't do that, but I will try that with the next one. And yeah, I just love them. I love the colorway. I can't wait for my Coast to Coast uh, coffee house uh, pre-order to come in. I'm really looking forward to that because Coast to Coast is one of my favorite um, hand dyers ever. This is a really neat four by one, I think, four or three by one, three by one ribbing, which I love. I love the um, like sporty stripes that are included. And I liked that I put in the um, kind of contrast color in the toe and the stripes and just left the the heel just like normal um i didn't completely follow the pattern i put all of these informations in my revelry project page again um usually whenever i get to the heel i just do the heel that i know uh which i learned from watching and reading through uh the crazy sock ladies vanilla sock patterns i would love to try some others uh, in the future for example uh nitty nutty is right now doing the vanilla's new black socks all of the time and they look quite like quite a bit of fun uh but yeah usually i tend to just go with what i know um but these are um these are my finished objects quite a few finished objects for this week when i was uh, sick at home I actually uh, finished all of the ribbings on my Loda vest because I didn't have to think too much about it and just the like doing the Italian bind off really slowly for a couple of hours just while coughing and sniffling and drinking like gallons of tea throughout it was actually quite therapeutic so the socks I had mostly done uh, I just had to finish a couple of rows uh, which I actually did at the uh, doctor's office while waiting to see my doctor and then this I actually had finished before um, actually getting really sick uh, that week. And it was just blocking while I was not feeling well and in bed. So um, yeah, that was quite a bit of progress, but not all of it happened in that week. I, I was quite far with most of them already when this last week began. So um right now we're in like a two week in between knitting podcast updates um kind of like schedule and i quite like that because that means that i can actually get some stuff done i don't think for me personally it would work out to do like a weekly update i don't think that that would work out so yeah let me know if you like the pace in which i'm going i usually don't tend to think about getting stuff ready for the podcast as much i just tend to go with what works for me and then see what I have and what I can show. And uh, that brings me to my works in progress, which I've got quite a few of. Let me actually start with something that looks a lot different from what it did last time around. And I'm so happy that I got some progress on this. This is my Storm Sweater by Petite Knit. Let me put these loose ends in there. I have I've had just finished the back panel, so I had maybe this much, this much done. And then throughout these last couple of weeks, I picked up the fronts. I knitted both fronts. I 
joined in the round i knitted down the front i picked up for my um crew neck i actually did this twice because i made a mistake on the first try again i was sitting in the car on my way to a doctor's appointment and uh i, I was rushing through it and i can cannot recommend that <laughs> So I made a mistake, but I, I redid it and I really like just petite knits, really uh, bouncy and like just really nice crew necks. I really enjoy them. And then I actually joined in the round and I have about that's maybe 10 centimeters down here. I will put in a progress marker so that we can see how far I get on this the next time around. I'm really enjoying knitting on this. It's really nice to have these like sections that you feel like, or at least I feel like I want to get through another section and then I'll get through another section. And it's just really, uh, it's repetitive in a way, but then there's another section and another technique. And it's, it's none of these techniques are difficult at all. It's just a mixture of pearls and knit stitches. And so these all make up the really nice texture. And I think that is um, both brilliant and not too difficult to do. <laughs> so yeah, I'm knitting these, uh, this on my bamboo chagu, whereas um, most of my other projects at the moment I'm knitting on my um, metal chagu which i would have never thought that i would be converted to a metal needle knitter uh, and still i love my uh, bamboo needles as well but i actually really enjoy my um yeah my metal chagu red lace needles which like i said i wouldn't have thought that i would ever say this <laughs> let me uh continue with the next garment whip before going on to my accessory knits. I had to put on some needle stoppers because otherwise this would just fly around everywhere. This is actually my cumulus blouse and this is really difficult to show I guess but I have just joined the round like I've just done two rows in the round. I've just barely um, closed this to the round. Um, this is the cumulus blouse that I am knitting as part of our cumulus mini cow over on discord uh, it's going really well we're over 200 people there already it's really nice and just like catching up with everyone else's progress and uh there were some mistakes or things that we we're able to help out with um help each other out with uh is what i was trying to say this is made up in the Isayer 20 and Isayer soft, soft Silk Mohair that I got in Cologne. I actually changed up my plans. I had some uh, Alva and Trio for a Cumulus blouse, but I really didn't want something beige. <laughs> uh, I wanted a pop of color in my uh, Cumulus blouse and that's why I went with this. Um, I really love the color and uh, I can't wait to get this fully in the round, like after the um, the last raglan increases and splitting the sleeves, because then this is going to be a perfect, um, perfect cinema knit. And I actually have a couple of uh, films on my list for next week. My partner and I are off work for one week and um, we wanted to go to the cinema so many times these last couple of weeks, but never were able to. I actually got a migraine on Valentine's Day. So when we had decided to uh, see, I think that was um, all of us strangers we wanted to see, we didn't make it. And then we wanted to see Zone of Interest. And I, like I said, got this stupid cold. And then I was still sick when we wanted to go see Dune 2. June part two. So we're going to see all of these movies. I think we're going to go to see Dune tonight and then see Zone of Interest and All of Us Strangers next week when we're off work. Speaking of cinema knitting, this is actually not a whip in its original sense. Actually, this was a finished object a couple of episodes back. This is my partner's uh, 
sweater that I made for him. But as you can see, it's back on the needles. I actually cut off the, I put in uh, the needle, I cut off the edge. This is just turned out to be maybe like five centimeters too short for him. And I told him I would fix that. I had not yet done that, but now this is the perfect cinema, cinema knitting project. Uh, as you know, I knit uh, without looking if it's just knit or knits and pearls in the round that is uh, I just don't have to look at it anymore I can completely focus and concentrate on the film it actually makes me concentrate more I guess because these like like so many people say if they're knitting they're actually able to listen to what a person is saying um, quite good actually a friend of mine asked me uh, if I was able to concentrate on the movies that I was watching and I told her yes um, I am a huge movie or cinema uh, cinephile person so I wouldn't want something to distract me from it um, but yeah knitting in the round doesn't and this just needs like five centimeter uh, more stock net in it to fit him properly which I just want him to really love that sweater he does love that sweater and he just wears it uh, just with either a t-shirt or a long sleeve he doesn't even mind the uh, quite rustic yarn woolly yarn on his body which I'm so happy with and I'm sure to uh, make him another sweater this autumn and some more socks for his birthday as well Okay, moving on to something that I had anticipated to cast on for a couple of months actually when I first saw Petite Net and some other new or uh, upcoming and talented uh, Scandinavian designers meeting up with Isaiah again. Last time they did that, the Breeze collection um, came out afterwards and this time around the Archives collection was announced. And uh, whenever I saw the like 70s inspired um, jacket that Petite Knit was making as part of the collection, I fell in love. And I had been eyeing up a kind of white Aran cream colored yarn from our store. This was actually the, I grabbed the last nine skeins and bought them from the store actually. This is from Rain Cloud and Sage, it's a discontinued yarn. Um, just because the whole company is no longer, which is a, a shame really. They uh, were using quite a lot of unloved um, German yarn breeds. Uh, this is actually a mixture of alpaca and wool, 50-50. Uh, but yeah, they were using regional, um, local, locally produced yarn, um, small batch production and ethically sourced yarns from Germany, which I thought was uh, brilliant. But yeah, we only have a bit like um, the whole like leftover stock from her we have at Strict Philippe where I work at. And I just got the last skeins of this base, which was just called Alpaca. Uh, and this is in cream. We actually do have a couple more skeins left in like a brown color, which is really nice. So I would recommend using that for maybe a hat or something. But Getting back to the design, this is the Esther jacket and this is not even, I don't know if you can consider this being a whip because I just spent one evening casting on because I really wanted to see um, the gauge. I had I had swatched for it so I, I knew the gauge was fine but I swatched the day it came out and then a couple of days later I casted this on because I just wanted to see how the stitch pattern turned out with this yarn. And this is what I got so far. So yeah, I, I really love it. I know so many people have been um, casting this on or wanting to cast it on soon. It's been a really popular, popular design from uh, Petite Knit and uh, for good reason, I think. So my next cast on is from the 52 weeks of accessories book from Lina magazine and it is the Philaya um, beanie from Jenny Ansa uh, which is this design which I really fell in love with when I first saw it. Um, I'm actually gonna 
put some pictures because it's pretty difficult holding up this monster of a book. And I have just, uh, I didn't show you this uh, before because it was just like living at the store where I just put in some rows every now and then when I had the time to knit while working. Um, and I actually just started yesterday doing the cable rows with the help of Mella because um, I wanted to try out doing the cables without a cable needle. So she helped me figure that out. I had watched some Andrea Mari um, tutorials, which are also linked in my uh, knitting playlist on my account. I have a sewing, a spinning and a knitting playlist just for content and tutorials that I enjoyed watching these last couple of years or within the last couple of months uh, whenever I had put them in and uh, actually this is going to be the I think it's going called the brim which will be folded up um, one modification I have made for this pattern is that I didn't do a double folded uh, brim this should have been even longer like seven or eight centimeters longer to do a double fold I don't within like German winter <laughs> it usually never gets so cold that you would need a woolly mohair double triple folded um, um, hat and so I didn't do that but yeah I, I really love the the look of this this is actually a mixture of some old stash yarn and then some yarn from the shop uh, this my um, the I just got from the store I didn't pay for this as the um, hat will per time live at the shop as a sample but then also be mine for the rest of the time um, and this was from my stash this is uh, but also this is a yarn that we sell at the shop but I didn't get it from our shop I got this as a gift a couple of years back so this is a similar Pura from BC Garn and this is the soft silk mohair from Knitting for Olive both, like I said, um, we sell at Strickverliebt and this is a kind of like pattern sample that will um, part-time live at the shop and part-time um, be with me and then eventually it'll just move on to be uh, my hat. This is just uh, an arrangement that works for us. Uh, lots of friends um, of the shop and of Mella um, and us as um, people who work there um, share their kind of knitting time um, with sometimes knitting up samples for the shop or just leaving some of our knits in yarn that we have at the shop there to um, for customers to see the like kind of huge bandwidth of things that you can do with the yarns that we have at the shop. I hope that makes sense but yeah I think it does <laughs> um, and then the last um, work in progress uh, I have one of my vanilla socks in the Jess in the Park colorway of Sorella yarns uh, finished and I had actually cast on my second sock and I had knit on it during my like lunch break but I completely made a mistake and was going for one on one, like one by one ribbing, whereas my first sock was obviously in two by two ribbing. So I will have to rip this out. I just didn't want to. Um, I, I just realized after my lunch break, um, because I usually just tend to cast on the second sock immediately after finishing the first. And that was really important to me. So as to not fell or fall into the trap of the second sock syndrome. But let me show you this beautiful yarn. It knits up um, kind of like micro striping in a way, which I really like, and therefore I wanted to keep it really casual, really um, easy with a just vanilla sock recipe. This is what it looks like. Um, I use the two by two ribbing. Um, as you can see, I mean, this is just a sock blocker that is not the same size as my as my um, leg, obviously, but the kind of extra amount of yarn here uh, is what tends to also be a bit 
loose on my leg which is why I'm going to try and do 60 stitches the next time but yeah this is my current whip this is actually finished um but I'll just let me just do it now I'm gonna rip it out I'm gonna cast recast it on um yeah I don't think I've ever frogged something on on screen before but yeah I'm gonna cast it on later on today I guess to have it um like I said for my lunch break um as I will now work on my Philaya um hat at home because of the cabling I just don't feel completely comfortable doing that at work because I have to concentrate and some sock knitting will be fine for that um I guess that was all the knitting now on to a spinning update I have actually finished the first two skeins for my traveler shawl these have changed so much during the relaxing bath that they got <laughs> and they look quite a bit different i am still going to knit the shawl with it but especially this one just looks a bit thicker and more voluminous than this and they both looked a lot thinner when they were pre-washing this is actually something that um the dyer of half of this yarn Frau Wörbchen Heike she actually sent me uh, uh, an Instagram message whenever I posted that I was combining the Manx Lockdown which is the light brown the Murid colorway and the color changing hand dyed yarn from Frau Wörbchen which was a Corydale and a BFL um, braid that I did a combination spin with so I had two braids and I um, kind of like rip them up and then I did a um I showed you in one of my last episodes how I did it and I followed a YouTube tutorial that I should have in my spinning playlist if you want to look it up um so yeah the Manx locked in and she said that they might behave very differently whenever I gave them the relaxation bath and they sure did I mean, I'm still very much a beginner um, spinner and there are so many things I don't know yet. I'm just learning about them and, but that's okay, I guess. Um, this should be about a worsted weight now, uh, which is funny because I had already, I was already able to get a DK or even sport gauge with my um, last spin which means I'm getting thicker again, but I'm not sure, or I'm pretty sure this has nothing to do with uh, me spinning thicker, but actually the yarn plumping up so much while washing. You can actually see in some of the parts in the skeins that the Murad has actually really fluffed up. But like I said, I don't mind. I did a, um, like a sample, um, little sample thing which I'm gonna gauge swatch with and then I'm gonna start uh, I will probably get two more skeins and then I'll have four skeins for the whole traveler shawl by Andrea Maori so I'm taking part in the spin it to knit it knit along and these are my yeah my, my skeins for that actually as a as a kind of comparison I had spun up uh, a pre like a I was testing out how it will spin up and ply up and just as a comparison I had spun up some of my singles of the hand dyed with another brown single that I spun the exact same way obviously I'm not being as like properly I'm not being super consistent throughout the whole thing yet like I said, I'm learning, but they are in theory, they are the same, but they, this was a Kent Romney, uh, the one that was really well prepared that I got at, um, Barcelona knits. It had a lot of shortcuts in it. And so it wasn't a lot of fun to spin with. And I 
ended uh, like I just spun one bobbin of it and then I put it to the side because I wasn't having a lot of fun but just as a comparison to you guys this is the exact same um, like two singles plied up and washed um, and this is also two singles plied up and washed but this is Kent Romney as the second strand and this is Manx locked in and you can see by the way in, in which they plumped up that the Manx locked in obviously kind of behaved completely differently in the wash. I'm not sure why that is. I'm excited to learn more about it. If you know anything about this, please let me know. But yeah, just a comparison of these two skeins. And maybe this is like, I haven't weighed them. It feels like this is a bit heavier, but yeah, this would have totally been a like sport or like fingering to sport weight. And this is obviously more of a, a DK2 worsted. Um, but that is what I should be getting for my traveler shawl anyway. So <laughs> as you can tell, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here, but I'm having so much fun. So <laughs> I'll um, just move on with it. And yeah, I just really love the colors for this traveler shawl. It has a beautiful like mouline, um, like barber poling uh, effect with the murid and the colors of my um, combo spin and yeah I can't I can't wait to start knitting this I actually have a um, a zoom booked in with Anna and Casey and I hope we'll cast on I'm I'm sure we'll cast on I think they're both doing the traveler crew neck or the traveler hoodie I think they're I think they're both doing an Andramari sweater whereas I'm doing the shawl first but I, I'm also pretty sure they want to do the shawl too. And uh, Casey was actually so kind and gifted me the pattern for the traveler shawl through my Ravelry wish list, which I'm so thankful for. So thanks, friend. And yeah, I'm, yeah, it's not perfect, but I'm like so happy with it. And I hope that the next two um, skeins will look pretty similar similarly otherwise it's a shawl it's not gonna be a problem um but yeah spinning project update and then i i hope i didn't forget anything about this i'm sure i must have but <laughs> i think it'll be fine with a suggested four and a half millimeter needle i'm going to do size two so the larger size and I'm getting at the moment, I think I got 168 meter per 100 grams. Actually, they both turn out to be around 100 grams, which was really nice. Um, and that's around a worsted, worsted to Aaron weight. But yeah, I mean, I made this yarn, so it doesn't really matter if it's perfect, right? <laughs> All right, let me give you a tiny update on my sewing. Um, I have recently ordered some uh, not perfect linen pants and skirt and I really love them. I see a couple of people that I admire their style and taste uh, of have within the last two years um, kind of worked with them or gotten linen products from them and styled them on Instagram and I really like the way in which they look and I decided to order from them myself and actually after that they reached out and asked if I were like if I was interested in a collaboration uh, and I said of course I was but I wanted to wait and see how the products that I purchased with my own money uh, fit it and so now that I've been wearing them a um, couple of day days and just seeing how they fit I have told them what I would like to try out as well so I'm really excited to wait for or receive this parcel and then actually there's going to be a not perfect linen giveaway a collaboration coming up with them in a upcoming video so keep um kind of like I don't know keep your eyes peeled for that this is all to say that I had gotten their linen kind of like swatches as well where you can tell what the um, colors look like and I really wanted to make a scrappy project with that with my sewing machine 
And so what I came up with is this. It's not finished yet. I have kind of done a little quilt section in the middle. Also, that is far from perfect, but the the pieces were actually quite a few like different sizes in a way. So it wasn't quite easy uh, to line them up, but I, I tried my best. Um, and then I put these um, pigeon and wishes gingham um, pieces on the sides. This was also gifted by Pigeon and Wishes for um, my sewing journey and I had made my first summer top with that fabric, linen fabric. Um, last week I showed you um, that top and I just used the rest of that fabric, um, not the whole rest. I have some left over and I think I'm gonna do some bows to tie in the sides because this is going to be um, a sewing machine cover. Um, it's actually the perfect size and I came up with the idea while I had just kind of sewn this part together and I just laid it over the sewing machine to see how big it was or just to see how it draped and I was like bingo I'm gonna do a sewing machine cover and I thought I could wing that like I could just do that freestyle in, in a way. I have now lined it up, not perfectly. I am doing a horrible cutting job here, but I have actually lined it up with a backing, which this is an Ikea tablecloth that I got for my sewing journey last year. Um, I wanted to do maybe some cushion covers, some project bags. I actually did some project bags with this. I gave one to my mom for Christmas. And um, I thought this was a nice backing. And then there is a um, quilting kind of like filling in here. So this is now three layers um, just held together. Um, like I said, I'm, I haven't done a perfect job aligning them. I'll probably just take them apart again and then uh, line them up perfectly. And now I'm thinking about, I would really love to try hand quilting. I would love to eventually do a patchwork blanket and hand quilt that. I've been watching videos about that. Uh, two that come to mind, especially one from Rosary Apparel, which is um, a YouTube and Instagram channel that I've been following for quite a long time already and really enjoy her Janelle's um, creativity and sewing inspiration. And then another one that I don't remember the name of exactly but I'm going to link it down below because I really found that to be very inspirational because she didn't know what what she was doing before she started just as I am not sure I know what I'm doing when I started uh, but yeah I think um, I'm going to put it down now but this is the image that I had in my mind and I'm going to maybe insert a picture showing you um, how it sits over my sewing machine so it doesn't get dusty when I'm not using it. I thought this was a really nice um, idea. And yeah, like I said, I'm gonna try and quilt this in some way or form. I uh, would probably need to find some quilting thread. I've seen in that one video that lady, she used some like Japanese quilting thread, which is like really intriguing to me. I'm not sure because it, it just sounds bougie or like interesting. <laughs> um, I'm probably just gonna get some Saju, Saju, um, like needles. We have at the shop. We we sell them and Edstre verliebt. And I'm probably just gonna get them when I'm working tomorrow. And then I'm not sure about the bias binding. I would love to do some bias binding. Obviously, I'm gonna clean it up and then do a bias binding. I'm just not sure if I'll try making it myself for the first time, which. I've seen lots of tutorials about this, but still it's intimidating to me. <laughs> or if I'm just gonna buy some bias tape, bias binding, I'm not sure yet, but in some way, shape or form, this is all gonna come together. And then I thought I'm just gonna attach um, some strands to make a bow with on both sides, which I think they would have to be quite long to make a nice bow and not like tug on both sides so yeah this is gonna be probably in my next episode as well 
if I can come up with uh, some solutions. But I'm actually already super, super chuffed with this. And whenever I get my next Not Perfect Linen um, order, I'm probably gonna, and that was my first idea actually, to make a cushion cover for like a small decorative cushion because I really love my, um, the Led Lopi or the Plotilopi one that I made. And it's just like, I think like 30 by 30 centimeters or 40 by 40. And I really love that. And I think it'll, it'll tie in with like my Stella quill cushion and my um, Sweet Shop blanket. And I, I mean, y'all know I love quilts. I just ordered some quilted looking stitch marker from Softly Spoken. I can't wait to shop from Etencial. I forget what, like how to pronounce this, but she makes wonderful handmade ceramic like mugs with quilt motifs on it. Honestly, I need everything quilt motif looking in my life. I just love it, love it, love it, love it. And this is a way in which I think color is coming into some more neutral, uh, into my more so neutral based wardrobe and yeah, living space, which um, I I enjoy that. <laughs> I like the like streamlined, streamlined, Scandi chic neutral look, but then I also like the little trinkets and things that remember like make me remember periods of my life and moments in time. Like this mug, I got it in New York. I got it from Book Culture, one of my favorite bookstores I have ever went to. Um, and so there's one of my favorite mugs, but I, I just love putting it on my basic old vintage wooden cabinet. And it's just, I don't know what I'm trying to come up with here, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, but I hope you kind of know what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> okay, so when it comes to acquisitions, this week I have this book that I actually asked for for Christmas and it took the book or the person that got it for me a couple of months to actually get it to me. As you can tell, it's March and it got stuck somewhere and so now I do have it with me. This is Brigitte Helmerson's book, uh, Zero Waste Patterns, and I'm really excited to sew from this. This was a recommendation of sorts from Anna from Br the Brook Willow uh, Knitting Podcast. I mean, she hadn't specifically recommended this to me personally at the time, but I had heard her talk about it quite a bit. And so that's why I wanted to have it myself. There's quite a few projects in this that I could really see myself making. First of all, I really love those shorts. I also really love this play suit. And then there's still so many more that I really love, but one of the things that I can't wait to make one day, like this is gonna be the, I don't know, like my, my goal as a sewist, as a beginning sewist, I want to make a quilted jacket and that's what it looks like and it's a really high skill level so this won't be anytime soon but this is what it looks like but yeah this seems like a really nice thing I've, I've actually started reading in it just a tiny bit I want to take some time during my uh, break next week to actually get into it and like properly read it um, because I I I kind of have the feeling that I can actually learn from this quite a bit. So some media updates. I actually watched through the whole of Superstore, which is a, a comedy series that I think must have been from the same makers as Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which was another series I enjoyed watching a couple of years ago. I thought it was funny. Um, I like the, the actors in it. I like the Kind of like just coming home from work not thinking about what i was going to watch and just watching something really relaxing and funny and um yeah 
rooting for the characters so i really recommend that i hope that i'll be talking to you all about the <laughs> movies that i'm hoping to watch next week a bit more um but as my health was not up to par this last this last week uh, i wasn't able to get into the films that i had intended to watch um i wanted to share two more podcast recommendations i actually forgot to do this last week and i have somewhere on my list that i just didn't get to yet uh, obviously i've been talking about her so much that i think it's kind of like a duh thing but maybe you haven't checked her podcast out i'm talking about andra maori she as you can tell has become one of my new favorite designers to knit up especially as i'm coming into my spinning obsession um she is uh yeah a really inspirational person in my opinion and uh, i really like that with her podcast i just sit down and i learn i just listen and i learn from the questions other people have asked i've never uh submitted any questions myself but i really feel like i'm learning from like i said what other people have had on their minds and have been curious about so it's mostly about knitting as well but some sewing spinning lots of spinning actually sprinkled in there and so i really recommend andrea's uh, podcast it comes out weekly always on fridays i think and it's just something it's short and sweet it's not edited which i th i find so <laughs> inspiring as well because like i there's always something I need to cut out, like, uh, I don't know, I have to blow my nose, I'm, I don't know, stumbling over my words, <laughs> there's always something, you know. And the second one is Knits by Mandy. Uh, I think her, like, full name's Amanda. Um, I've been watching her maybe for, like, one year now, or something around that. I really like her kind of realness. She also talks about media recommendations as I do, uh, but more so about uh, reality TV, which I find fascinating, reality TV in the US. I watch some kind of like reaction videos about German reality TV, if I'm being quite honest here, which like I'm not ashamed about that, but it's not like very intellectual context, uh, content. But um, yeah, she does that. I think she's really smart about her knitting. She is one of the people that I admire for not rushing through her knitting. I feel like we can all tend to just want it all and knit it all. And uh, for her, with her, I find that she has a lot, like she's thinking about um, intentionality quite a lot and she isn't um, keen on like overconsumption and everything. So, so I hope I'm doing them any justice with how I explain their podcasts. And I'm sure you'll probably, most of you will probably already heard of both of them. But if you haven't, I'd suggest you go check them out. This means we're at the end of today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, let me kind of give you a pre kind of preview of, of what's to come next. I hope to be filming another vlog soon, kind of like um, in my multi craftual era um, vlog on how I spin for my traveler shawl, on how I sew my machine uh, like cover and um, kind of like how much knitting I get done in a day, something like that. Um, probably when I'm off work, I, I have a bit more time to actually vlog. We want to get the garden ready. We're going to get the balcony ready for spring. Um, we have some stuff kind of booked in for next week. Uh, and I'm excited to do, yeah, kind of uh, a bit more relaxed video like that. I'm also thinking about uh, rounding up my Q1 knitting in April. So at the end of this month, uh, beginning of next month, I should have an overview of if I'm kind of, yeah, reaching my goals of my Q1 knitting at the moment it looks really good. I've actually spent some time with my knitting and planning journal and my making a journal this morning. And it looks really nice. Like um, I'm, I'm on track with lots of the things that I had set out uh, and I'm really enjoying that. I'm actually going to quite a few festivals and um, events these next 
upcoming weeks so throughout the whole of March and April there are going to be quite a few trips that I'm uh, that I've planned on taking and events that I'll be at. I actually gave an overview of all the events that I'm going to be at in my last or the video before that and I have it in my um, like a highlight on my Instagram channel as well. So if you do like want to say hi on any of these events if you're also planning on going to them I'd really love if you come up and we could chat a bit about yeah our making and um, how we're all doing. <laughs> So I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're getting loads of knitting time. Um, let me know what you've been working on while listening. If you have any, I don't know, like um, opinions about what I was sharing. Um, yeah, I can't wait to knit on my whips this next week. And I'm really grateful for all of you watching and enjoying some virtual knitting time with me. Bye. Thinker, everything I say and everything I do is for her.